Welcome to our uh, newest episode of the Lebanese Physicians Podcast. And today we have uh, with us Dr. Uh, Ahmed Mahdi, uh, who is a uh, first year resident at uh, Kansas University in Wichita, Kansas uh, at this time. And uh, I will be discussing with him today uh, a tale of transition, a transition between uh, two cultures and uh, two countries between uh, Lebanon and uh, the US. Uh, welcome, uh, Ahmed, to the podcast. Thank you so much, Dr. Khalil. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here. Thank you. So, Ahmed, I, I knew you from uh, my days at uh, LAU, and uh, uh, I know that you did your uh, medical school at LAU and subsequently, uh, and prior to that, actually did your undergrad at LAU too. Can you tell us a bit about your uh, journey from high school to LAU and beyond? Oh, definitely. Um, LAU at that time was um a a an opportunity for all the middle class families with big dreams and big anticipations to try and pursue um a, an american system and american level training um so i did my uh, bachelor's there after i was offered some uh, scholarships and i pursued a a, a major in biology and minor in chemistry on a pre-med track Afterwards, I was interested so much in the human application of biology. So I was interested in medicine and how to interact with people. And then from there onwards, I tried to develop more and more um, passion towards medicine. And it was a point whereby my background um, as, a, as a person that saw a lot of family members having a lot of medical, uh, medical uh, complex medical conditions and a lot of um, loopholes in the medical uh, care and then I just kind of that, that fed me with, with a lot of determination and a lot of perspective on the humanistic approach of, of medicine and then onwards I went on to pursue a medical training at LEU um, as a first generation uh, physician in my family and then um, at that time, I was trying to inv investigate myself and trying to explore myself and be of value where I was as a, an, among a lot of um, distinct, distinct and special people. And I think um, all of this field uh, fueled my, 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 my journey with perspective, with experience, and, um, and I'm, I'm humbled by, by all the opportunities. And this led to me ending up somehow in Wichita, Kansas. So I think it was the cherry on top, and I'm very blessed for my journey. Yep, and I and I think not not only you're good at medicine. I think uh, one of the things you're good at, and one of your hobbies is is writing, and uh, <laughs> that's how I uh, ended up contacting you. Is because uh, you wrote a blog for ECFMG, which actually was promoted uh, by the Education Commission for Foreign Medical Graduates because it was such a well written uh, blog. You actually wrote a survivor mindset in times of peace, uh, a Lebanese experience, basically detailing your uh, your experience uh, moving to the U.S. and uh, getting adjusted to the system uh, here and uh, discussing uh, your time in uh, Lebanon. So that was a great uh, article that you wrote. Uh, uh, Thank you so much. Thank you so course. much. And uh, so basically, when you were at LAU, when did you make that decision that you want to move to, to the U.S.? Uh, is it because uh, like everybody at LAU wants to go to the U.S. or is it like you had a different approach or a different mindset as to why you wanted to go there? Um, it was, my, my experience in medical school was a journey of self-discovery. So I was trying to, as much as possible, try and explore everything that I went to. And since I was coming from a point um, where I was trying to discover my own personality in the field, um, I was uh, testing the waters, experiencing different, uh, different fields and trying to um, see where I can be the best version of myself. Um, at, at that point, I, just, I, I explored surgery, orthopedic surgery, and then I explored other options. But honestly, I was also still fascinated about the, the medical system in the United States. So I think it's, I, was, I, had, I always had um, interest in trying to pursue a medical training in the States. But they, the, the, I think the point where I made my decision was during my um, clinical electives. I took two months um, of clinical electives at Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. And when I saw the level of care, when I saw the, uh, the, the way healthcare professionals interact with each other and the model that is built 
to tailor to a higher level of performance to feed the medical system and 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 rise to the challenges for the patients i felt like this is a place where i can hopefully be of use and this is a place where i can channel my energies to contribute to that team and to become a more empowered version of myself and keep doing what i'm doing in my own way within the system i think at that time it became clear for me that it's it is time to try and focus my energy and focus my 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 efforts in pursuing this um this this path and i'm i'm grateful to, to have led to this point and i'm sure there's a lot of work i mean you have to study for for people who don't know you have to study for step one step two potentially step three and and then get your ecfmg certificate which you oh, yeah. wrote a blog for them uh, and then come over here so basically uh, you applied you did your interviews uh and uh, you got your acceptance i guess at uh at kansas university uh, at uh, kansas university in wichita so uh, how was your feeling when you when you got acceptance? What did you feel? <laughs> it, so regarding everything that was happening back at that point in Lebanon and the 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 a lot of the, the stress of a collapsing reality around us and that and, and, and that being in the background while trying to reach for a, a huge light, a huge success. Um, and finally grabbing that light, that felt like such a relief because there's, there's really an endorphin surge in, in, in reaching a dream and reaching a, a, a goal that is set high. Um, we always talk and romanticize in the pursuit of dreams and the pursuit of objective. Um, but really when you try and get the glimpse of that, that achievement, there is an unbelievable feeling and I think I was blessed enough to have that and when I was when I knew that I matched the University of Kansas in Wichita I honestly was very interested I was very interested and I was um, eager to know more about how my experience would be in this program because I know that it was a very rich um, media for a lot of um, physicians and specifically Lebanese physicians in the community over here and from there onwards, it was just one goal to get to Kansas, Wichita. Excellent. And can you tell us, you mentioned, you mentioned the economic collapse in Lebanon, because I think the situation in Lebanon was sort of stable, maybe in slight decline over a long period of time, but then there was a sudden decline in October 2019. So can you tell us a bit about that economic collapse that happened and how it affected uh, you uh, as a medical student and your friends also as, as medical students at LAU at the time? Yeah, definitely. Um, so as just a background for everybody and for those who don't know that Lebanon is has operated on a malfunctional system for a long time. And every now and then it has an acute exacerbation and then it is artificially resuscitated. And then the abnormal system continues and results in further collapse. And this is how it, it has been for a long, long time. But what makes the experience in that year, um, the year of uh, 2020, 2021, much more intense and really shaped a, 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 um, a well notorious um, uh, description of the Lebanese resilience is that it was so intense in terms of rapidity and in terms of intensity. Um, at, at that point, the COVID pandemic hit hard and it, it hit in times of a hyperinflation in the Lebanese liras, a collapse of the uh, banking system in times of marches and revolutions and, and pleading for human rights um, in, in Beirut um, and in all the cities in Lebanon. It happened in times of a massive explosion that annihilated um, the city that we know. Um, I still remember right now um, the, the phones ringing, the, the, the mushroom flame that everybody thought was very close to a nuclear explosion at that time. Um, and, and working throughout that night, trying to triage patients as, an, as, a, as a researcher. And this is one of the things that I tried to highlight briefly in the, in the article and how that, sh how that hits heavy on the, on, the, on the reality that you're trying to resuscitate for those around you. And during that acute decline in the reality and our, um, desperate intentions to resuscitate our reality and persevere and trying to maintain our dreams. I was going through that with a lot of friends that were sharing the same path. And all of those people were very hardworking, determined people to try and reach their goals. 
in, in pursuing a medical residency and reaching their dreams. And at that point, it wasn't just for them, it was for the people around them because the financial collapse um, made it primordial and essential for everybody um, in Lebanon to try and reach out to become a stabilizing force for their families um, residing in Lebanon. And at that time, I was, I was still um, trying to persevere that dream and I was still focused on my, my goal. And I was still trying to, I was conducting research back then and COVID-19 research was a nationwide study. So I was visiting areas, working with people, um, talking to municipalities and seeing people. And the thing is I was conducting research in several areas while people are, and, and, and having the privilege of meeting people in their weaknesses and trying to talk to them on an um, individual and personalized level. Um, and at that time, I, I collected glimpses of people's lives. I took screenshots in my head of 13,000 or so people that, I've, that we've met and recruited throughout our studies and people that we um, talk to and interact with on a daily level. And all of this really, I, I absorbed all of this throughout this year. And I was trying to remain focused on my, on my perspective to not fall off because it was a very sensitive time for everybody. And at some point, the gatherings became smaller. People were leaving ahead of me uh, for the medical residencies, for research opportunities, or for other, for other um, um, career paths. And by the time I got my acceptance, it was such a high in, in, in the, in, amidst a lot of chaos. Um, and when I got on my flight and when I fixed my papers and when I tried to um, rise to the demands of, of my opportunity, um, I think I've collected a lot of this experience in my head. And it wasn't until I landed in the States and started my residency program is, is that I started to reflect on my journey and on what happened throughout that year and what hap on what's happening throughout the first period of transition into the States because it was a reflection of the past experience as a um, Lebanese resident in times of collapse. It was a, a reflection on the transition to a, to a um, residency program as a, an IMG. And it was a continuing perseverance for a dream that doesn't stop there, but just takes another um, scope. So it was a lot of things to reflect on and they, those came out in the um, article at some point. Right, exactly, and that was a, for people who don't know, I mean, that was a very difficult year in Lebanon with, I mean, it was not only the economic collapse, but the COVID crisis. And then on top of that, it was the explosion. I think that took away all hope uh, that things were going to get better at that point. So it was a very, it was one of the more difficult years that have passed, uh, that the country has passed through. So can you tell me a bit, as we, as we are getting closer to you getting to the States, so the weeks, uh, there were the, the weeks prior, the couple of weeks prior to you, uh, jumping on the plane and coming over here. And I think it was Turkish Airlines that you jumped on uh, yeah. <laughs> that day. So how, how were you feeling? What were like, because you were, I'm, I'm sure you were sitting with your family and reflecting on uh, the future that you're, that you're going to have. So how, were, how was your feeling uh, reflecting uh, on that with your family? Um, at that time, everybody was so happy. And everybody thought, saw a, a light at the end of the tunnel and everybody was um, excited for the new journey, but everybody was also composed in such a manner that we were trying to avoid any um, emotional relapse at that point. We didn't want to dwell enough on the, on the step because there was, it was a very emotional time for everybody in Lebanon. And at that time, um, we were focused on getting the paperwork to try and remain to operate in, an, in its functional system, but trying to meet the demands of my residency. So uh, what was that going to the Ministry of Public Health and getting some paperwork done or just uh, finding um, the, the, the financial um, demands of paperwork and visa applications and stuff like that. Um, and once everything was done, it was, it was um, a moment of silence. Um, they, I, I remember going in the car with my family and just they dropped me off at the airport. And then at that point, at that time, I, I recall my mom starting to become emotional and then my dad just holding her back, just saying, it's time to go. So we right. said goodbye really fast. We didn't dwell on the goodbye. And then I boarded my plane, got inside. And I, when I slumped into my seat on my first way to, to, to Turkey, it's, it's the feeling that 
that tells you you're safe now, as if someone is swimming so much and then he finds the shore, the shore at some point. And this this uh, collapse in my chair at that point was uh, a, a moment of relief, a moment of anticipation, and a moment of letting the guards down to explore the emotions. And at that time, I remember just crying throughout my flight to Turkey, I'm crying because I I knew that it has been a tough year for everyone crying because I know I would, I would miss my family, but it just overwhelmed me at that time. But that also fueled my um, determination to continue what I've planned for my entire life to continue and, and aim to do. And that's pursue my residency training. So at that time, um, I was just focused on getting to the States. And I remember taking uh, three flights. So for, from, it was from Lebanon to Turkey, and then from Turkey to Chicago, and then from Wichita. Chicago to Wichita. And then by the time I reached Wichita, it was around 11 p.m. Uh, I remember it was just so dramatic. I just picked up my phone, wanted to, um, to meet a friend um, at the airport and the phone call, just the battery died. So I charged in my, my airport anticipating things. Um, then I went to my Airbnb and at that time in my room at the Airbnb, it was a moment of, okay, we made it. It's time to uh, recuperate. It's time to uh, take a deep breath and then organize for the next step. And that's the transition into a new level. And those two levels intertwine at a certain area or a certain time period whereby I'm withdrawing from um, the, the, the stress of Lebanon and I'm embracing a new beginning. And at that point, well, there was a lot of reflection and a lot of change and a lot of growth. And it, I'm, I'm very grateful to, to have reached so far and then continue to reach further. Good. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you. It's, it's, it's extremely hard to leave uh, when you do. But once uh, once you get here, you feel that a lot of stress is gone. Uh, I remember watching my daughter like playing uh, tennis with her coach after we moved here and I was sitting, hearing the birds or whatever. And it was like after that explosion had happened and I was like, oh my God, like there's so so much less anxiety now than I, than I had in the past. Oh, that's not good. So, so basically, you you decided uh, like you got there and you're st starting from scratch, right? Like you, you've never lived in the U.S. before. You're like getting yourself <laughs> ready to start a new life. Yeah, it's hard, right? Like, how do you? You need to find an apartment. You need to find a <laughs> car. You need to to do all the stuff and at the same time start a new job, basically. Uh, so my my first time ever on a plane was when I went for my electives. So at that time, I, I, it was the first time I ever got on a plane, ever, the first time I ever leave my, uh, my country. So there was a learning curve that I had over there in the process, but the biggest, uh, the biggest, uh, the biggest growth, what happened through the, in the transition to, to the States for my residency training, because it, it's a literal transition um, into a new community, into a new culture, into um, a more independent and a more serious uh, uh, phase of my life. Um, I had to discover everything from getting a social security number to trying to move through an Uber. Even the, the most simple, th the simplest of things were, were challenging because, for example, I didn't have a credit card of my own because Lebanon's banking system could collapse and you couldn't choose anything from Lebanon's money because it was, it was trapped in the banks. So I had to count my money, take some, uh, I think I took $2,000 as, a, as, a, as, a, uh, as an amount that was deducted from my payments later on to try and re resettle as, as part of the uh, package that KU offered for all moving residents. And in that time, the, the transition itself was it required a lot of resilience and a lot of stepping up to the challenge and a lot of uh, translation of personality in a new community. And this is something that's often understated or under discussed. How to translate who you are as a person from your own background into a new community that's trying to understand you, not just the language, the ideas, the thoughts, the cultures, the emotions. And this took time and uh, it, was, it was a learning curve. Right, and and then and then you 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 got you got this ready. You started your uh, residency. So how was I mean? It's, right, it's it. I mean, you were in American, I guess, American system in the medical school, but it's a completely different culture. So how was was the culture shock, or were you able to just adapt very quickly? 
uh, make make uh, friends with the residents and work with the faculty uh, quickly. Um, re residents and faculty at KU are very kind, very nice people, very constructive people. The leadership is very intelligent. That way, it tries to always uh, track the, the the program members. Um, but I my culture shock. I wouldn't say it didn't exist. It did exist. I did have the culture shock, and I did have a, a moment of is what I'm saying really reflecting what I'm thinking, and that's and that's something. So you have to. It's something that people try. Uh, people not don't talk about enough is that as an IMG and the first time coming here, you tr you think in Arabic, but you try and translate that into another language, and then this this. This, this takes time because it's a skill, it's an acquired skill and it takes, it's like any skill, it, it's either that someone teaches you it or you learn by trial and error. And the combination between teaching and trial and error decreases the error. And I think that's the perfect combination, just like driving a car. Um, you can get a manual, you can study it, but at some point you have to try and hit the brakes hard and then know how to hit it right. And then it's just a skill. And um, it took me a couple of months uh, to try and um, get back on track and try and um, find my way in the program. But I was impressed at how the patient care is tailored to the patient and how the patient is guided to make his decisions and empowered uh, through different channels in the healthcare system. Um, so learning the system and learning the community and learning myself was they, they, they all were um, um, a learning point and a transition point. And um, once I was comfortable and once I completed my transition mentally, emotionally, medically, it was time to continue the, to do things the way I do them um, and then the way I've done them before because that was the point all along to just do things my way um, while trying to uh, learn from people, work with people and then um, honestly, to just to, to be as humanitarian as possible with my patients and my, my colleagues. And this is, this is why I did what I did. So do you find differences like in, uh, in how you take care of patients uh, and interact between uh, uh, Wichita and Lebanon? <laughs> the patients themselves, the faculty, the interactions? There is, there is a cultural difference. Uh, we, I think we both know about that. There is a cultural difference. Uh, the patient in, in Lebanon is more uh, taken care of from a paternal perspective and a family perspective. And um, the patient over here is taken care of as a, um, in, in terms of a collegial perspective. Um, and and it, it, does, it does give, a, there is a difference. And, and um, the, the cultural aspect of the medical system is a huge aspect of it. And this is something that cannot be accounted by metrics or, or by, by laws or by regulations. And it's just the way you, it's the soft skills and the ways you say to, to a patient um, what you want from him and what, what you want and what he wants from you to do to him. And, and um, it, it, it was different. <laughs> and, uh, but but the, 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 the nice thing about my experience in the States was you learn how to advocate for the patient by empowering the patient. And uh, you empower the patients with information, with resources, and this is how you try and deliver your message across. And this is how you try to, um, to, to, to practice. So that was, that was one of the main points. Right, it's more like shared decision-making rather than paternal kind of decision, shared decision made by you and uh, uh, the because over, over there, like my experience was when I first moved there, was uh, if you give them the option to to make a choice, they don't like it. They're like, why, why are you just give me, giving me the answer? Like, I don't yes. hear for the answer, not for me to make a choice. <laughs> they, they look at you at the caregiver, like a caregiver perspective. They want right. you to fix them. Why didn't you fix them? Exactly. Or really, they want to make exactly. their own decisions. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, so what, are, what are some of the things, I guess, you're looking forward to in the future over in the US? And then the other question for you is, what are some of the things you still reflect on and miss in Lebanon? Because I'm sure there's still some nostalgia to uh, the home country, right? Definitely. Um, at this point, um, I've gone comfortable um, expressing who I am, functioning in the system. 
And um, my goals are um, fall in different categories from now onwards from, from the first category. I just want to continue the person that I am now that, I, that I've succeeded to a certain point in translating my personality in the new community. Um, and I just want to continue pursuing that. Um, another setting, I want to become the best uh, physician I can possibly be for my patients, um, whether it's with didactics, with learnings, with um, working with colleagues, learning from my back, from my surroundings, and from my um, coworkers. Um, and it's it requires someone to be very sentient and very um, to have a lot of insight to, the, to how the system functions in order to find their own path in it. And this is one of my other goals. My my other goals um, in terms of research is to conduct more research. To, uh, to contribute to um, the research community as well as the medical community as I learned from it. Um, I'm, I'm always in a student mindset and I will always be humbled by patients' pain and always be humbled by uh, my coworkers' information and to always drive me forward. And as I'm doing that, I will always reminisce on the nostalgia of Lebanon. And I think we all share this, this nostalgia to the smell of coffee and the songs of Fairuz and the, the small chit chats on the way to work and on the way back from work. Um, I miss the, I miss the, uh, the, the, the connection with my patients, the Lebanese patients in their own way, as I try to embrace the connection with uh, patients in the United States and in Wichita, Kansas. So the way you interact with patients and the way you tailor your words to a patient's concerns and the patient's emotions and the patient's background is something very important. And um, I will always be nostalgic, but it is part of who I am. It is the driving force to where I'll go next. And as I'm speaking to you, it is Wednesday. Uh, my flight to Lebanon is in two days. Um, I haven't told family yet. And I'm anticipating to see how I will reflect on my experience in Lebanon as someone that has been in the States for, 12, for 10 months by now. So this should be interesting. Right, so I'm, I need to make sure not to publish this before Friday. <laughs> Wait a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I mean, there, there's stuff like, like eating, eating, walking outside, getting a manusha, let's say, and uh, and the smell of it, like as you're walking or eating like a falafel sandwich for lunch. Oh, uh, yes. It's hard to get over here. And then the other, the other nostalgic event for me, I think, is walking in a uh, hospital and uh, getting called by Dr. George Khoury for a <laughs> for a coffee. <laughs> the famous Dr. Khoury. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> this, is, this is one of the things that you can't get anywhere else. So <laughs> I'm, sh I'm glad you share my nostalgia, Dr. Khalid. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. So any so as we as we get closer to the end, to end the podcast, to end of uh, this episode. Uh, so any advice uh, that you give people coming after you? Because now the match just happened and there's a good number actually of students from LAU and other universities in Lebanon who are uh, uh, embarking on the journey that you embarked on 10 months ago. So what advice would you give them? Um, I was, it was, it's funny that you'd ask me. I was just writing a, another section for the, a 2022 guide for the ACFMG as just talking to IMGs. And I think I will tailor this more to my, um, to my fellow IMGs in general, my Lebanese counterparts in specific. Find your own path. Everybody has their own story and your success story matters to everyone. And succeeding in a dysfunctional situation like the one you have in Lebanon is an achievement, achievement by itself. Surviving is an achievement by itself in Lebanon at this point. So reach out, advocate for yourself. Don't lose your color. Don't lose your touch. And um, to my and and they will they will make it at some point. Uh, it's one of the things that really really um, marks Lebanese um, expats is that their determination and hard work. Um, and for for my for for all of the Lebanese people that are living in the states currently, we succeed together. We succeed in partnership, we succeed in collaboration, we succeed when we throw back a rope to the home country and we bridge connections across the world to try and can create a continuum of experience that starts in Lebanon, that feeds with the nostalgia and that transitions into the United States. It is this continuum of experience is 
something that will connect us to home and that will connect home to us and that it would feed off of both of our experiences. Those people in Lebanon wanting to come to the States will come to the States. Those in the States will help those from Lebanon to come to the States. And we, we really succeed together. It's, it's been like this for, for many, many years. I, I, can, I look back on the people that left in the 70s and the 80s to the States and they, they specialized and came back as faculty to Lebanon and then probably either stayed or just came back to the US at this point. And I see that they, they're just people like, like me. I mean, they, they're people like me and my fellow IMGs and my fellow Lebanese um, residents that just matched or are about to match. It is the, the mentality that we have to share our experiences that pushes us forward. And as they come here, there is a time for transition because we're used to live in a survival mindset back at home to survive. And we don't pay attention to it because this is how we function. We have to try and wait in hours to get gas. We have to wait in hours to, to, to try and get a, a minimum of the amount that we have as money in the banks. We try to overdo things just to get the minimum. And as they transition into here, they will find themselves in a new platform and they will um, continue to grow and they will continue to heal. Um, and, and we're waiting for them. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's a, once you're in that survival mindset over there, I think it makes you very easily adaptable. So you can adapt to any situation uh, right. very easily uh, and you get that mindset. So what's your future with ECFMG? I mean, you wrote such a great, uh, great blog article. Uh, uh, are you going to write more for them? Are you going to, what's your future with ECFMG? I, I, I love to write. I, it, was, it actually started as a fun thing, as an outlet, as, try, as a way of trying to communicate my thoughts. And um, people from ECFMG then reached out back. They had very nice feedback. They were very kind and supportive. And they published it and then they offered that, as I said, to write again in the 2022 nationwide guidelines between ECFMG, um, I think uh, a AMC, and then two other um, organizations that I apologize for forgetting. But I will try as much as I can to advocate for my thoughts. I'm trying to connect with my fellow IMGs and trying to share a common thought. Communication is key in this, in this period because it, it tells everyone that we're all in this together. It shares experience. And then the patient, the, 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 the person that's reading this um, piece can really relate to it. I hope so. And then know that someone else across the country or across the States is really having the same experience as they are. And their story is as important as they are. And, and then I think that it fuels um, uh, unity and, 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 and collaboration and, I hope I can still continue to contribute. I know that I will try to invest in every opportunity and then we, we will rise together. I hope so. All right. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ahmed, for uh, being on this episode. Uh, and I hope uh, people uh, will learn from your experience and, uh, and uh, from your advice to them uh, as they embark on the same journey that you've done yourself. Thank you so much, Dr. Fazil. I'm very humbled. Thank you so much. And Thank you for having the time for me. Of course.